losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord, give me a sign A sign Yo, do me a favor Don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've got my own issues I need a comb to get through Hey family, boom, 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 boom. Welcome back to Perspective with Itu, where we have conversations that matter with people that matter, darling, with your favorite celebrities. But to family, and I only just realized now, as I was watching last week's episode, that I didn't say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> sure, excuse me for my rudeness. Sure. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. May the good Lord bless you in all areas of your life. May he bring overflow. May he bring blessings upon blessings. May he make all of your dreams come true this year. And may you just be expectant of more and more blessings. It's just blessings. It's another blessing. You know what I mean? May 2024 be above and beyond what you ever thought or even imagined. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so, so without further ado, let me introduce our phenomenal guest for today. I have the honor of sitting with award-winning actress, Gabsila Chabalala, who is a South African actress. Some of you may know her as Pinky Mujeki on Holland Pinchi in their SABC2 drama series in 2010. Later in 2012, she was cast as Sylvia in the SABC1 drama series Intersections. She had the role of Cindy Shabangu in another SMC one drama series called Fallen. Then in 2013, she joined the cast of Scandal and portrayed the character of Konde from 2013 to 2015. Meanwhile, in 2014, she played the recurring role of Gloria in the first season of Single Guys. Gamsila Chavalala moved on to score a guest starring role in the Mzanzi Magic series Got a Life Crisis also in 2014. In that very same year, she featured as Samantha in Generation. Girl, the bio just goes on and on and on and on. And I just want to jump into this conversation because I'm so excited. So without further ado, Gabsila, welcome to Perspective. Thank you. Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. An honor to be here. Sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. I think it's such a blessing. You know what I mean? And I'm so excited about the conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday at Home Cell, we were talking about when do you stop saying Happy New Year? <laughs> and I was saying, you know what, guys, if you haven't seen somebody in the New Year, uh, until maybe about my June, you know what I mean? Then like you can say Happy New Year, you know? June is far. And like I said, I mean, when I walked in here first, guys, I was like, Happy New Year. She's like, actually, that's one of our questions. <laughs> <laughs> or when are we going to stop saying Happy New Year? When do we stop saying Happy New Year? Stop saying Happy New Year after Valentine. That's okay. Stop. Because then, when I Happy Valentine. Okay. When I Happy Easter. Yeah. Happy after moving. Yeah. It's another day. Yeah. So, June is far. Right? It's a no no. Got Valentine. Okay, so these guys let's do the right thing. Okay, or stop or happy New Year. Because some people were saying mid Jan, you know, and I was like, no, God, it's so that's too early. early. It, it is too early. early. That's too early. We're already past mid Jan, and I haven't seen. Right? Oh, but they have Just like happy New, happy New Year. Like, you know what I mean? It's a New Year. Yes, a beautiful one. Yeah. Oh. Right. The left one. I'm so looking forward to 2024. Me too. Yeah. Me too. A year of overflow. Oh, yes. A year of overflow. That's yes. perfect advancement. That's how we are in that church. Yes. Perfect advancement. And I think we all just have the same thing. The alignment. Differently. Yeah. Because yeah. you, your guys' is this? CRC. Is what? What is it? Uh, what? Overflow. Overflow. Yeah. Perfect advancement. Yeah. Oh. So it's the same thing. They align. They try to. So like God was just saying it. This year. That's true. This year. My kid. Great. Don't rings. Money testimony. Bubba, bubba. 
<laughs> I love it when you do that boom, 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 boom. I've seen it on Instagram and I was like, ah, oh, she's so cute. You know what? It actually stuck with me. I said it the first time and then people loved it. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, I might as well not. You know, they yeah. know that when we hear that, I see too. too. Yeah. <laughs> Gabby, you so you also from social media, right? I am. I am from social. I can't believe you're from social. Hey, cool guy. I'm from block D. <laughs> what am I from block H? But I grew up go block G. I I was born there. Go where on G? Where? I'm um, just behind those win. Make you go Sushmit. Um, kind of Sushmit is which like Mom Konza. Mom Konza funeral. Yes, yes. Oh my well, yes, like right there, like by the corner. It's not too far from the clinic. No, like you can walk. That is so great. Yes, yes. Like my church is that side. Is it mm. our one of our branches? Are they? Then here this is called. It's called Shema Urban Church. Okay, so the regular building, yeah, kind of thing. The Seventh Adventist Church, I think. Okay, go block G. Okay, and yeah, and then we took over. Oh no! Now we went to Praise Tabernacle. Go block D. I've heard of Praise. Yeah, 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 I've only been in my church. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where I actually became a born again Christian. Oh no! Yeah, two thousand and seven. I was seventeen. That's when I got born again. So, Gabby, what do they call you at home? Gabsile, Gabby. Yeah, mom. Is it? Yeah. Oh no! Is that's what they call me? Oh, how many other special? Well, the special name I have is mom. Is mom? Uh, oh, I love that. And honey. And honey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when my kids see my phone ringing and they see that it's my partner, they're like, oh, so when I say hello, honey, they're yeah. me, they're like, hello, honey. I'm yeah. It's like, oh, please. I'm her palette. <laughs> so that's my other special name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Take us back to your childhood. How was like, how, how was it like growing up with your mom, with your dad, with your siblings? And how many siblings do you have? Okay. So I grew up. My mom got me when she was very young. She was 16 when she had me. Um, so she needed to go back to school. And we grew up with her grandmother, who was my great-grandmother. Yeah. And because her parents had divorced, so we were just staying with um, the grandmother and her six siblings. Mm -hmm. um, and she was the second born. So Nana was 16, the sister was 17. And I grew up with my uncles, who are not too much older than me. Um, it's people I would date. <laughs> yeah. Like I love what you. Yeah. Um, then when my grandmother passed away in 95, I think that's when everyone just scattered. Everyone mm -hmm. found their own way. My mom, the, my dad was late. Mm -hmm. My dad passed away, I think in 94, 90, 95. My dad also passed away in the same year, actually, but I didn't know him. He knew me, but I didn't know him. Okay. Oh, it's too young. And then my mom got a sense about my, my sister together. Yeah. Um, then my mom got married. Then I stayed with my grandmother. I just don't remember when I stayed with my grandmother. Mm. But most of my childhood, I know I spent it with my grandmother. I was like in and out of my mom's house mm. and my grandmother. Um, and yeah. And then I was with my mom, my cousin, who is my my late mom's uh, uh, my ah quasi my hand <laughs> in fact when you direct translated yeah big mom my late big mom yeah um so we were staying with her daughter who's my cousin yeah and so she grew up as my sibling okay in fact that's what sibling is because sibling doesn't yes yeah so we stayed and yeah, she, she's like three years older than me. And then 10 years later, my mom got a daughter mm -hmm. who's my other sister, Dawazo. Then five years later, she got another daughter who is fancy. Um, and I'm the eldest one out of the four of us. No. Yeah. I love that. Growing up with your grandmother, mm -hmm. did you ever feel rejection? Like that loneliness, kind of like, where's my mom? Because every child wants to be around their mom, right? Um, yo, my grandmother and my grandfather, who was also late. My grandfather's late. My grandmother's still alive. Mm -hmm. Man, 
the role they played was just on another level. Sure. I think I was where I was supposed to be at that moment mm-hmm. because my mom was too young. And we only started bonding late. Like when I started staying with her properly, like full time. Yeah. I think um I think maybe I was in grade six or grade seven, somewhere there. And in my teens, I really didn't like her. She wasn't my favorite person. Okay. So I preferred staying with my grandmother because I think she understood me better. Okay. Uh, and my grandfather, my, I was my, fa- my grandfather's favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I was Nkulu's daughter. <laughs> so, no, I didn't feel any rejection. But um, I think growing up and getting now into my 20s, mm-hmm. I was like, mm, how would life would it, like, how was life going to be if, I was staying with my mom from a young age and if my father was alive and, 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 mm. um, and then, yeah, so no, I didn't, I didn't feel it then. And because my grandmother's still there, I'm still closer to her than I am with my mom. And even though my mom and I have a good relationship, but my grandmother's like my mom. Yeah. So no, she, yeah, my grandmother, uh, yeah, she's a rock star, man. <laughs> I love that. I love the yeah. So now when you were growing up, like you were saying, and then you started asking yourself these questions. Yeah. Did you ever sit down with your mom and have that conversation with her? No, I didn't. Um, I didn't have that conversation with her. I think I was fortunate enough because the Holy Spirit started showing me what she was going through. I get you. So it didn't really. And even now I'm, I'm understanding her better without even talking to her because of what God shows me sure. about her. And her past, why she's like this, the way she is, you yeah. know. So I guess that's the advantage of having the Holy Spirit yeah. because it reveals all these secret things to you. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I was having a conversation yesterday with um, my husband and we, we were talking about my niece. So like my niece is always, you know, like our house okay um and my sister not at home daughter yeah <laughs> yeah so now yesterday my sister was there and then she woke up from her from sort of like a nightmare and um, thinking that her mom has left her you know what I mean? She's four. She's five. Oh, like she's a kid. Like she already has trauma. I understand it. You know what I mean? And I was saying to him that, but this is how you know abandonment issues start. Yeah. And we are thinking, oh no, like Chawana has got nothing. I hate right. I hate it because I experienced it. Yeah, and my mom would tell me, "How will Andy Jay then when you get outside, she's gone. Yeah, she's like, no longer there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't do that to my kids. Mm-hmm. I tell them they can cry. It's okay. I'm yeah. mad. I'm just like, mom is going. And if you cry, it's okay. You'll keep quiet. Yeah. Coming back. Mm. But Eau Dodge, yeah. I know what it did to me. Yeah. Um, and, and it also plays into your relationships. Yeah. Um, whether it's friendship or Everything. romantic relationship. Yeah. You always on some, the son of Don Dodge. Thank you. <laughs> right? Yeah, so it's horrible. Parents should stop doing that. Please. Parents should stop doing that. But I'm referring to it because you know how like your your mother like was not around. Yeah. And now that we are old and we've got the Holy Spirit, thank God. Yeah. We can now look, you know, in hindsight. Yeah. But in that moment. In that moment is horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, just like, why is this woman doing nice this to me? me? Why are you leaving me? I'm a child. It's you're not so blessed. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, like you're saying, because of the Holy Spirit, I get to heal. Yeah. You know, and I don't, as much as I'm human, um, sometimes I'm like, oh, she's so annoying. Yeah. But I always have God say, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Understand where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. Or understand why she's like this. So that helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Have you forgiven your mom? I'm getting emotional. I, I'm discovering something now. <laughs> um, I didn't know I was angry at her. Yeah. I didn't know I was angry at her. I don't know. Come on, Tish. Because you got to put one more. 
Um, no. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, I don't know. I don't know. I've never thought about it. Um, and you, you didn't open up a wound. You opened up a place that maybe I think I was scared of going to. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'm angry at her. I don't know if I'm upset. So, I don't know. I think I need to. Because this is something new that I'm discovering. I knew that I felt something, but I just didn't know that it's breaking me. Sure. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe that's something I need to go research <laughs> and dig into and just find out what is it. And maybe it will heal other parts yeah. of me as well. So, yeah, thanks for that question. Mm. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't wear makeup. I don't wear makeup to church. Like, it's very rare that you find me wearing makeup to church because I'm like, the word of God, and you find yourself right. Like, Why are you crying? And it's like, I don't know that way. So I'm learned how to always think just be you girl. What about a makeup how act, man? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. That means how was that in all in all that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that makeup thing because you know, and it's a very sensitive topic. You know, and I've uh, spoken about it before, but by not getting into it that much, yeah, I feel like makeup sort of like helps a lot of people to hide themselves yeah you know what i'm saying yeah um and not everybody of but course. some people use it yeah as a as a weapon yeah to hide to their to hide it. yeah you know what i mean yeah i mean there are people that would just go to the shop which is like five minutes away with makeup to go buy bread they and they leave, leave with that makeup you can't leave your house without, without makeup yeah it's and those are the things that we need to dig into and find out what, why am I, why can't I leave my house without makeup? Yeah. There's something that I need to deal with inside. And no offense, like, yeah. I don't think we're talking about people who love makeup. Yeah. You no, know, it's not about that. But we're talking about the people that yeah. are hiding something, yeah. you know. They are dependent. That depend on yeah. makeup. Yeah. I've heard people on vlogs and I'm a, I watch a lot of vlogs. Okay. I've heard people on vlogs who are like, oh, guys, uh, please don't mind me. I'm, I'm a little bit crusty now. Yeah, and that time, what did they wash up? Yeah, what is crustiness? Is what is crusty? crusty? So is natural crustiness? Yeah, it's natural crustiness. Okay. Are you supposed to wear makeup for you, for you to be, to yeah. look like fabulous? Yeah. And I'm just like, those are the type of conversations that we need to be having because I have a 17-year-old daughter. And now, like, when she watches things like that, she now starts believing that she what? wants to wear makeup for her. When it is she's crusty. Yes. You know what I mean? And I'm like, honey, you're beautiful even yeah, with your natural face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I started, when you're talking about that, actually, I just started something new now, this after our fast. Um, I wake up my kids with a hug. Sure. And then I affirm things to them. Like, as soon as they get out of the bed, I'm like, come get your hug. Sure. Um, because I used to do it in the evening. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, come get your good night hug. Mm -hmm. But now I've started a good morning hug mm -hmm. where I'm just like, you're beautiful. Mom loves you. Sure. You're going to school. Remember, you're there to learn. You're not stupid. If yeah. you don't understand something, ask the teacher. Mm -hmm. And then with my son as well, but I do it with the four-year-old and I speak in the four-year-old language. Yeah. Because uh, my daughter's a bit older. Mm. Um, then with my son, I'm like, you're kind. Yeah. You're not going to fight with anyone. Yeah. Um, don't be a bully at yeah. school. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's it's things that we need to learn from home. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wasn't woken up like that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, my mom would just be like, Bugat, Bugat. And it's like, why are you still angry? <laughs> We were sleeping. What was that thing? Yeah. Yeah. I just hated that thing. Yeah. I really didn't like it. Sure. Um, but, and that was me when I was younger. But yeah. now because I understand yeah. better. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, she's going through a lot. Yeah. Or oh, she's been through a lot. Yeah. yeah. What are some of 
the conversations that you were having with yourself when you're much younger in your room behind closed doors alone? Oh, that's a nice question. I've never been asked that before. <laughs> I've been longing for an interview like this. Sure. I have. People should learn from you. Son, son, I am right and for no pain. I'm learning. Learning. Because some of you have been around for so long, yet the questions that I didn't bother with. And that actually not my face. But she's only playing, darling. I get tired, but I get tired. <laughs> so, um, I used to ask myself if I'm pretty enough because I used to think I looked like a boy and not that boys look ugly. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm a girl, but I look like a boy. Mm. Um, and I don't know why we were taught that if you look like a boy, then it means you ugly. Yes. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah, that's, those are the kind of questions I had. Um, because I don't mind looking like a boy now. I mean, my son looks like me. He is so handsome. Ooh. So yeah. if someone had to say you look like a boy now, I wouldn't mind. Cause yeah. I've got someone that looks like me and they are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I used to ask myself if, why am I dark? Um, why can't I be like my, my cousin? Because she was light. Okay. She was bubbly. I was always like very shy, extremely shy. And I'm like... um. I want to be the one that's called to the parties and oh, but I'm yeah. too scared. Sure. Uh, yeah. And will I ever get out of this shell that I'm in? Because mm. I wanted to, but I'm like, how do I get out? Because I want to be that child that's, so, that's everywhere, that's yeah. loved by everyone. Yeah, I wasn't. Sure. Yeah, I was. I was naked young man on that. And I stopped because then it thinks. Mm. Yeah, so I'd always put these two fingers in and just sit in my own corner. Mm. Just observe. And I don't regret those times because now I can play all those characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Oof. Self-esteem is huge, eh? The biggest. The biggest. I believe that most of the things that we do and how we react is because of self-esteem. Yeah. When you know who you are, nothing intimidates. You. Yeah. Yeah. When you know who you are and you know who you are, nothing moves you. So I used to hate seeing a pretty woman walking in the room. I hated it. I hated it. Like, Nancy And Nikki Monor, yes, she's gorgeous, but I'm like, oh. why am I not like her? Oh, she thinks she's better. But now I'm like, no, man, why? Enjoy her, celebrate her, enjoy the beauty, watch it, you know? And it came from low self-esteem. Yeah. Because of maybe bad relationships. Yeah. Then you get a guy that will... And because of where you come from, your yeah. childhood, you used to think you look like an ugly person. And I don't know what an ugly person is. Yeah. But you look like an ugly person. Um, You're not good enough. You're not this. And then you get into a relationship and the guy cheats. They're like, ah, maybe it's because of that. Hey. Now you go back to that childhood trauma. And then now... Now it's now it's on other women. Now when you see other women and it's just girls, you start hating her. When there's men, it's even sure. worse. Then now the poor start coming out. Then it's like, oh, she thinks she's better. But now when you just find yourself and be happy and content with yourself, it's fine. Like you don't, I'm not that yeah. Who says what? Oof. Yeah. How did you get to that place in your life where you overcame? That low self-esteem. Genius. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> I didn't that they all. Or get a booty. Yeah. Or like, hey, I would do all. Hey, this man, this man took me out of a lot of things. So, a lot. And I wish I had a better relationship with him when I was younger. Because there's so many things I wouldn't have gotten myself into. Sure. Because there's a lot of things that I got myself into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's when I started having a better relationship with him. I was like, oh my God, this yeah. is who I am. Yeah. And then I started discovering myself. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I love me. Yeah. I love me. Yeah. I love who I am. I love where I'm going. I love my past even. Sure. Um, but it's Jesus, man. Sure. Even rather than for that day or Abu Brother Jesus. 
and he's got his way of loving. Yeah. And I started embracing that. And I think maybe because when I was younger, I wanted him to love me a, a certain way. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't giving me that. So it just built so much anger in me. Yeah. But now, uh, he, you're a rock star, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were some of those flaws and how did they impact the family? Some of the flaws, I think him and my mom were not really the greatest example then of marriage. So I was just like, oh, I don't like being in this house. I don't like being here. I just want to get out of here. And I think that's why I got married very young. I wanted to get out. I think it was an escape. Sure. I got married at 21. Sure. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to leave the house. Um, he wasn't, he wasn't like my grandfather. And because my grandfather and my grandmother were already old, I think they went through their hardships of marriage. Yes. And I didn't get to see that yet. yet. So with my mom, I saw it and it made me not like him and understand that he's only human. And he's probably also learning how to live with my mom. Yeah. Um, so those were the hardships. I think I just didn't like the man he was then. But now I'm understanding him better. Please you. Just the disclaimer, guys. Um, if you and I were saying, if you and I, if you and I were saying, what is Ralika? What are you saying? us and we somewhere. So, this girl, my girl, loves to eat you. I eat you. So no, Shem, like my grandmother taught me well, eh? No. I thought, like, <laughs> my, grand- I like, oh, my, God. <laughs> my grandmother taught me well, Ari Kel. Tell us, yes. When you like a yes. When you like a you know what I mean? <laughs> because, honestly, guys, Tisha just makes you worse. It does. You know? When I like you, what again to think, what Tisha is doing? Honestly. Yay. So, you know? When you like a so, babes, I want to take it back to your relationship with your stepdad mm-hmm. and why you had to get out early. Yeah. And we will get to your marriage. Okay. Whilst you were still in the house, what were some of the things that you wished he had done and the conversations that you would have with him? And I want to take it back here, and it's another question. Yes. But... God was saying to me that the reason why, some of the reasons why, like, we don't trust him, right? Like, when, when we pray, mm-hmm. we don't trust him is because of our relationships with our father. Ooh. You know what I mean? And my relationship with my dad was very shaky. Still is, really. You know what I mean? Um, it's a lot. So, so now when I go to God, it's like, oh God, if you can do if this for do me. It. Yes, you know what I mean? Because I'm not sure if you're going to do it. Because I'm not sure because of my dad. And this is something that he showed me now. And I'm like, yes. and we've been having this battle between God because when you pray, like you're praying with so much doubt because you're like, oh, you know, let's see what like, Maybe, maybe you know what I mean? Because of our relationships with our fathers. So it just stems from there. So yeah. now, what are some of the things that you had with your dad that, that you were just like, you know what, I just have to leave. But you look back on now in hindsight and you're like, oh my God, did this actually affected my marriage? It's affected my relationships. Mm. It's affected my relationships even with my own kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I wish he... I, sh- I wish he had a better relationship with Christ. Because then he would have known how to lead us. Sure. 
Yeah, I think that it, I'm summarizing. Yeah. Um, and I, I wish he fought maternity. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because we do fight. Yeah. Um, but I just wish he wasn't so loud mm. about the fights because they were just so loud. Um, there were times when every time I heard footsteps, I'd panic. Sure. Every time I heard a door banging, mm. I'd panic. Every time I'd, I'd hear a garage door opening, I'd panic. Mm. So I wish, I wish it was never like that. How did it affect me in my relationships? I started attracting men that were like that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was attracting men who were like that. My first husband, yeah, was was similar to him. Sure, um, and yeah, he was similar to him, but but different. But there was some ex- aspects of my dad that I could see in my ex. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I don't want this. I think what I ran away from is what I actually ran to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that I was running to what I'm running away from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I was like, no, this is not, it's, this is not what I want. Um, and because, because I've always had God in me, I knew that I know the kind of husband I want. Yeah. I know him. Komotopa guy again, Zimara. He's like this. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah. 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 We're asking too much from these men, but those are the standards. Yeah. You know, we want a man that represents Christ. So I didn't get a man like that. Um, then in my second marriage, mm. Wes. Wes. Ngaragi mm. from, left from zero to hero. <laughs> bad and going back to my first marriage oh may he so rest in peace he i think we were young mm. we were young because i really think that if we were older mm-hmm. we could have resolved a lot of things but we were young you. and i mean i was 21 he was 25 yeah. and life was happening yeah he's at his peak and i just got into my 20s i'm yeah. working you know yeah so he still wanted that freedom of let not marriage bind us and let us keep on living our lives. Yeah. Live your life. Let me live mine. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, no, we need to live this life together. Now yeah. we are one. Yeah. You know, I understood that we were one. I just didn't know how to put it. Um, and I think I could have done better. I really could have done better. He had his flaws, but I'll talk about mine because he can't speak for himself now. I'm sure he's watching in heaven. He's like, you dare. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, yeah, I, and because I saw violence growing up, I was abusive, sure. physically, physically abusive towards him. So whenever I was angry, I took it out and I was like, oh, ah, ah, biting, scratching, sure. punching. And then there came a time, sure, there came a time where, we're thinking, guys, that I don't care how strong you are as a woman. Men were meant to be more strong than that. Yeah. Way stronger. <laughs> so I think he was so sick and tired of my nonsense. Yo. I'm like, what's happening? What happened to my strength? <laughs> Why am I so weak all of a sudden? Uh, because I thought I was stronger than him. Yeah. I'm born to her. Listen, I'm a man. Yeah. I don't care how yeah, strong you think you are. Yeah. I was not hitting you back because I respected you. Sure. But now I'm going to show you. Yeah. That. And then from that day, I'm like, okay, no, you will. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't even do much. But I think I got so afraid because I like a tembola. Like, I like a roller. But I wasn't hurt. Sure. I don't know if he pushed me or what, but that push, it is a metal shame. It was a big one. Or when I died. Yeah. And he just walked away because he didn't even hit me. Wow. He just pushed me. Maragarolangare. I don't know what he did to me. Sure. Excuse me. So, um, that's what happened. I think that's what affected me. Um, and then another thing, 
with my second marriage, I think I, I saw that. I, I went, did I go back home? I think I went back home for like two months. Mm -hmm. and, and because I hadn't healed from my childhood traumas and the family that I came from and the marriage that I saw, oh my God, my mom is calling me. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I then attracted a man that was exactly like him, if sure. not worse. Sure. Um, and like I said, my, my dad is a good dad. Yeah. Is he a good husband? I think my mom can answer that, but he's not the kind of husband I'd want to marry. Mm. So I attracted that man sure. again. And I didn't want to get married again, mm. but I fell pregnant. Mm. And you know, especially in the black society, mm. it's that thing of valusazo. Yeah. And this guy wanted to get married. Like, oh. like yeah. I think he asked to marry me like two months into the relationship. Yeah. And I was just like, mm. I just come from a marriage. Week. Yeah. And, um, and then when I felt pregnant mm. and... They were like, ah, you have to get married. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be born out of wedlock. Yeah. But I didn't want to. I didn't sure. want to. But I was like, ah, you know what? Maybe this is an opportunity, a, a second chance from God. Um, and then we got married. But I just was not happy from the beginning. From so me saying yes, I was. I said yes because because of where I come from and and Christianity. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. When you don't understand Christianity, you're bound to do things wrong. Yeah. You know. When you don't have a relationship with God yourself. Yeah. Not not going to church. Yeah. I was a church goer, mm. but I didn't have a relationship with Christ. Mm. But if I had it, then I could have gone to Him and said, God, I know my mom is saying this. I know my family is saying this. What are you saying? Yeah. And I'm sure you would have directed me <laughs> in other ways. But it happened. And I guess it was not a mistake as well because I learned a lot. I got to discover Jesus. I got to discover him and have a better relationship with him. Mm. Um, so how did that affect me? I, because he was, it's like he was replaying my, my childhood. Um, I then started... I started disliking him, but he was also giving me a side that I lacked, which was like, I need a father. Yeah. I need um, someone that's going to save me from, sure. I don't know what, save me from life. Yeah. Um, I need, I don't want my child to grow up yeah. without a father, you know? So those are the things that went through my mind. No, get married. I mean, look, you didn't grow up with your dad. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to give your child this. Yeah. You want your child to be like you. And, yeah. and, 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 and I was like, okay, no, this is the right thing to do. Um, I had trust issues in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And because he did not model the kind of man I thought I was marrying, you know. Um, so then, oh, he made me go through a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to channel all of my friends. And I'm not angry at him. I was though. Sure. I was so angry at him. I'm like, this guy wasted my time. He wasted my time and he left me with two kids. Mm. Two. Why not one Nyana or us or something? <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, uh, then I started. I started healing in the marriage and I started leaving the marriage while I was in it. Yeah. So then I, start, I stopped being hurt because I used to pray. God, please take away these feelings. I don't want to love this guy again. I don't, I don't want to love him. Um, and then whenever I'd back off, he would love me the way I want to be loved. And then this one time I just came across my sister sent me a video. Yeah. The narcissist. Mm -hmm. And she was sending it for other reasons. Yeah. But I was like, oh, this is who I'm staying with. Sure. This is my husband. Then I started doing my research. 
I would watch videos, started educating myself about narcissists. And now I'm one of this, Elia, my people perish because they yeah. lack knowledge. Yeah. I'm like, this is true. Mm. I perish because I lack knowledge. Sure. If I knew better, I would have done better. Yeah. Um, then I what started watching the videos, started watching Ianla. Mm. He came out, Ianla Lee. He had love and love. Why are you going to move us fine? He had love and love. Started watching her videos um, and I've, I'd follow her and I'm like, okay, so this is what's happening. I don't know. God just started giving me so much knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And I was like, okay, I don't need to fight. I need to play him smart because yeah. this is the kind of person I'm dealing with. You don't fight with the person. Yes. Yeah. Um, because when you fight, they're going to win. Sure. Fight at a level that they cannot reach. Started praying, got into fasting and... The Holy Spirit started leading me in a direction I never thought he would lead me. Sure. And I know people are like, but there's no way God can tell you to leave your marriage. God hates the boss. Uh-uh. We choose our people. Doesn't mean that Kimodi Marikete thing and he is in it. He lets us, I mean, all of you free will. Yeah. You know? So if you are in the wrong thing, mm. then you get yourself out, man. Yeah. Get yourself out because he does... He gives us a standard of what a marriage should be, yeah. how a husband is, how a wife is. So those standards are not met. And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I had a lot of questions before I left. I think I've been trying to leave from after I found out that I was pregnant. I've been trying to get out of that. I've been trying and I kept on going back, going yeah. back and going back. And it's like there was this full time. No matter over it is it's something. Hurry, I must keep going back. Sure, you know. Um, and yeah, and then the Holy Spirit was like, "Leave. I'm gonna take care of you." I was out working. Mm. I had just given birth to my son. Mm. And I'm like, "How the hell do I get out, God? I need a job first. Mm. And God is like, "Get out. Are you gonna trust me or are you gonna trust man?" Sure. And I was like, "Okay, I'm scared, yeah. but I'm gonna jump." And I jumped, and he's been taking care of me. How did it affect my children? It affected it, and it affected them in a positive way. I'd like to think. I think I guess they'll speak for themselves when they're older. But right now, I'm. Um, I think I'm such a super mom, man. I am. I really am. Like, I have my flaws, but I think because I'm not doing this on my own, I've got God. It's so smooth. Sure. It's so smooth. Like, they are not fatherless. Yeah. Ah. I like to get on Jesus. Yeah. I can pause on that. Brian Jesus. He's amazing. So he's just guiding me and showing me what I need to do when I need to do it. And I was scared. So I'm like, how am I going to parent these children alone? I'm not sure. Rather than alone. Um, are they not going to have problems growing up? And God is like, no. Just be still in Norway. Mm -hmm. Relax. So I'm um, relaxed. So, yeah, for those that don't know what narcissism is, what are some of the things that your ex-husband would do that reflected what mm, narcissistic yeah. people are? Extremely manipulative mm -hmm. to the core. Sure. Kim was I narcissist? I know people are going to be a like, she's so negative, she's so <laughs> like angry, she's so like that. No, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> in fact, what I'm going to no worry, I'm going to like a chummy get out. <laughs> Run, girl! <laughs> but uh, she'll see it herself. Um, and I hope he, he finds God, yeah. you know. Um, so, he, he would be manipulative, cheetah, to the core. Sure. Um, a big liar. Um, what is it that he would do as well? Gaslight me. Sure. He would make me think that what I am seeing is not the truth. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I started believing that. Because sometimes I'd find things in his phone and then I get months, I'd say, 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 I'm like, what's going on? Um, and then 
when you start pulling back, they now give you what you always complain about. I remember there were times where I would cry, you know, he would, he would go silent, mm. not talk for the longest I could go for was a week mm. without him talking to me. And then I'd end up going to him, get, let's talk, what's wrong? And it'd mm. be on something, there's nothing wrong. Or what? And I'd cry there alone, beg him, beg him, like, please, let's talk, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? Now it took me back to that little girl that was rejected, that thought she was ugly, she was not good enough, and, 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 and. So I'm like, I don't want to divorce. Tell me what I need to do to be that perfect wife or to be the wife that you have in your head. I, I'm willing to change. Sure. But it was, he would just be so off, like, and it's like he loved it. Nungareki. He loved seeing me crying and begging him and oh, so it was just so horrible. And then when I started knowing what spirit he's dealing with, yeah. I was like, oh, Shane, you're so broken. Then I got silent for a whole month. We were not talking to each other. Sure. And nowhere in me was I broken or felt like, uh, let's talk, let's fix things. I was like, no. I think the person that I need right now is God. God, I need you to guide me because I've tried it my ways. Mm. I've gone for therapy. Mm. I have gone to marriage. What, but you name it alone because he felt he didn't need it. He didn't need that. Sure. Yeah. He's like, the problem is me. Went. Copanaliri pasta. Renafatanaliri pasta. Hey. There's nothing I didn't try. And then when I started, um, like I said, I started healing in the marriage. Mm. Because I started seeing him for who he was, not who I wanted him to be. So I started forgiving him and I also started forgiving myself because I was like, oops, maybe you're not bad, but you're just not for me. You're not the kind of man that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's someone else out there that can appreciate the kind of person you are. But as for me, this is not the husband that I want. Mm -hmm. You don't model Christ. Sorry, I'm yeah. okay. Yeah, Lou, you're a pastor, but... No, you're not oh. that guy. Yeah. Um, and not everyone who is a pastor is a pastor. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Not everyone who is a pastor is a pastor. Yeah. They're not called. Uh, and maybe some are called and they got, um, they got lost during, because life happens, yeah. temptations, and sometimes you want more power and yeah. these things. So I think that's the trap that he fell into. Um, kind of what was the question? There was a question. No, I love it. No, no, but this thing. The question was, what was all oh, the things? Yes. yes, for those. Like, yes, no, yes, what yes. Is. Yeah, he was. Yeah, those are the things that he would do. Um, yeah. So he 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 was that. Mm -hmm. He was a narcissist, and I started knowing how to deal with him. Sure. Um, I think we stayed like a year without being intimate mm -hmm. in every way. Mm -hmm. No holding of hands, no nothing. Like, it's like all my feelings were dead. That prayer that I used to make back then, sure. it came. Like, it was answered. I'm like, finally, good. Mm. Now I need a way out. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell him when I get out. Mm. And I got out. Mm. I was that girl. Sure. And in a no worry, that year when I decided that I'm going to leave, I started collecting boxes mm. and I would hide them in my helper's room. Sure. So auntie knew what I was going through. Yeah. So I was like, auntie, I'm going to leave one day. Mm. I'm going to leave. Mm. And I've been singing that song for many years. Sure. I was with my auntie for seven years, actually. Ooh, nice. So she saw everything. Yeah. Um, then I would start hiding the boxes. Because mm. Then this one time I left and I was going to church. Mm. For the weekend. Yeah. Then I left. That's how I left. Then I called Auntie this one time. I was like, okay, Auntie, how did this all get? Uh, oh, we had a, a security company together. Mm -hmm. It was under my name. He started it before me. Mm -hmm. Then I joined him when we got married. Mm -hmm. Then, I was like, okay, nah, this is like a year before. Yeah. Like, now I want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy anymore. 
He's like, no, why? What's wrong? And I was like, yeah, you don't have to cover me, but your actions are covering me. Yeah. Um, and then I kept on telling him, I'm like, I want to leave. Can you please give me money? And then when it started getting closer to me being ready now, I was yeah. like, okay, if you can just give me money for three months, because I can see the money that's coming into the, in, in the company. Hong Kong fashion at three months. I won't even look for an expensive place. Get out of town now, Nyana. Five thousand every month. Pay for the kids' school fees. I'll be fine. Just give me three months. Trust me, I'm gonna be fine. I know. I feel it. Yeah, no, I'll give you. And then okay, fine. Furniture for Sharabia. I don't need much. I mean, I'm moving into a two bed. I just need a room for myself for the kids. Um, I just need maybe couches, one TV. We had a huge house. Just need one TV. Fridge, the thing, the fridge, we had like three fridges. Sure. I'll take one small one because Mogilo move and go thing. Yeah. Because I started looking for places. Mm. I was going to move to Centurion. Then he agreed. Then Chalet the high again and the business I ends. I can sign to his personal account. Sure. But okay, this is the game we're playing. Happened first month, second month, got enough I was like, listen. Um, and mind you, we're not talking. Yeah. I'd only talk to him about that. Mm. I need to leave, Sashu. I want to get out of this. Um, can you please help me with money? Yeah, no, I'll give you. I'll give you. Okay, sharp. Second one passes. Third month. I was like, okay. Yeah, fit. That's the same thing. Takes out the money, puts it into the account. His personal account. Fourth month, I'm blogger account. Blog. And I remember it was in the morning. <laughs> Because I'm going to be on a very long call right now. Because I'm shiga shiga no. Finally, yeah. auntie, auntie, do this. Get block your account. Mm. Then, um, then what happened? Oh, and then I, I took money out. Mm. Took some money out. It wasn't a lot. It was enough to, to. Like, get me through for like a month or yeah. two months, mm. depending on the kind of lifestyle I want. Yeah. As a slave, no, that's a survivor. But as a normal girl like me, I know to survive for like two months. Yeah. yeah. Um. Then he got angry. Oh, he got so angry. And then he started tarnishing my name. Oh, yeah, I left. Then I got some other big in the Yeah. Because this is like a blocky account. Yeah. Then I was like, no, I'll fix it. It's a weekend. I'll fix it. Mm. Then did all of that. Then that's when I told him that, okay, you can sit the there and I'm leaving. Mm. And because I already knew who I was dealing with, I knew that he was going to threaten me. Yeah. But I had too much information to be threatened. I was like, you don't scare me. Yeah. You are actually very scared. You are scared of me. Because narcissists are broken, PL. Yeah. They are so scared. Sure. They are so scared. Like, I think if you understand them, you'd actually feel sorry for them yeah. and not be angry at them sure so i was just like do what you need to do and he's a giant eh? now go sure. go and yeah i'm like hey i would do hang up my animal okay but i wasn't scared i just had this boldness and i was like do what you need to do brother mm. let's fight and yeah that's how i got out and then um yeah and then he left the country he's from congo mm -hmm. he left the country and then he left with my other kids who I missed so much. Uh, we still have a relationship, like yeah. I said to you. Yeah. We still have a relationship. We talk all the time. My eldest son is like, ah, I love that boy. Yeah. He loves me. Like, Manolo and Rata, he showed. Like, I've never had a stranger love me like this. Wow. He loves me like I'm his own. Like, yeah. he's my own. <laughs> um. And now I communicate with the mom. We've always communicated with yeah. the other. Um, but the mom and I are communicating. So the I remember when I was still in my marriage, I used to want to go on holiday with the mom and the kids because I was like, I've got three kids. They were her kids and I was yeah. staying with them. And I'm like, I want to have a relationship with you. Let's raise them together wow. because you will love them more than me. You know, so, you know how to love them better. Yeah. So when I'm with you, you're going to show me. Let's do yeah. this thing together. But she just didn't. I think at that moment, she just was like, ah, yeah, oh girl, I know this man. You deal with him. But 
Um, and I just thought that time she was full of mm. anger. She yeah. thought better. Yeah. But something in me was like, she's such a good woman. Because there was a time where we met up. Mm. And I was like, um, listen, because now you, you've you created a relationship, mm. and it, because she's also from DRC. Mm-hmm. You come to South Africa sometimes. I also want you to meet my daughter. Mm. It was before my son was born. Wow. I want you to meet my daughter so that when they come visit, my daughter must come with as yeah. you. Know, I don't want them to separate. Yeah. So you the big mom, I'm the small mom. Mm. Let's raise all of them together. Sure. And now our dream, our dream, our dream. <laughs> our dream is coming true. <laughs> so now we've got that. So we were talking about it. We're like, no, girl, we need to visit each other. May yeah. God just bless us with money. So that we can go on holidays with our kids. Yes. Yeah. So Lena, when she checks up on my kids, she's like, where are my babies? Yeah. Tell them big mom loves them. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. It is. It, I love it's that. It's beautiful. I mean, that's another conversation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. That's another conversation because I think a lot of people suffer Yeah. in relationships and marriages regarding co-parenting. And there's just thing. so much anger, right? Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. Co-parenting is difficult and I it depends who you co-parenting with. I don't co-parent with my ex. Yeah. There is no co-parenting there. I yeah. think it doesn't exist. Um, because he's not present at mm. all. Mm. Like not even two cents of him. Sure. And I've made peace with it. In the mm. beginning it used to hurt me so much. I'm like, Oh my kids, let's make this work. Let's let's yeah. just breathe them. We don't have to work things yeah. out, but let's do it for them. Yeah. You know, I'm like Actually, it's a blessing that you're not in their lives because my son is also going through the most with his father. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, hang in there. Yeah. The one thing you need to do is just to respect him. And I know it's difficult, but hang in there. So everything that I was going through, my son is going through it. But mm-hmm. as a child, uh, the worst. Ooh. The worst. So, but because I'm equipped, I'm like, don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because I remember my son used to call me and he's like, Mom, I want to kill myself. And I'm like, sure. I know. Mm. I know it. I know it. I used to want, I used to have those thoughts. Sure. I used to want to kill me and my son, my, 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 my youngest one. Yeah. I, I was like, let me just take my life and just also take my son, my daughter, Otasala. I don't know why I wanted her to stay. Sure. But I was like, so I understand what my son is going through, mm. but I'm just like, hang in there, yeah. hang in there. God is going to do something. Ooh. So, yeah. And he's old enough now to mm. see what's happening. And I remember this one time, he's like, mom, you know, I almost hated you. I'm like, why? He's like, because of what Papa used to tell me about you. Mm. And I'm like, what? He's like, but everything he was saying about you, he's doing it. Yeah. I'm seeing it in here. Yeah. And I'm like, God will speak for you. Yeah. God will always speak yeah. for you. It doesn't matter what people have said about you. Yeah. And it, it lasts till for how long. Mm. God will always reveal the truth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. What are some of the conversations that you're having with your son now that you wished that somebody was having those conversations with you when you were going through? That divorce is not your fault. And mm. it's okay that we are not together. I'm still going to love you. Yeah. I'm, you're still my child. Yeah. Um, because sometimes when... Parents hide what they go through, and I understand why they hide it. Um, because they thinking that they're protecting us. Some people stay in marriages because of the children. Because yeah. They're like, oh, no, I don't want my child to, to see what is happening. But parents don't understand that we see everything from a young age. I'm like, I can see that you're crying because you're not happy where you are. I can see that you're crying because of Papa. I can see that you're crying because of Mama, you know. I can see that you're treating me differently because you just had a fight with my mom. Mm. So we need to have that wisdom to know how to speak to our children when parents are separating. Mm. You know, I had this conversation with my daughter. She was five then. And I'm like, Papa and Mama are not going to be together anymore. Mm. I didn't want to take her, like, as I used to read Alan, yeah. next thing we're staying in another house mm. and now where's my dad? Yeah. So I was like, no, Papa and I are not going to be together anymore. Um, but you can always visit him. You can mm. call him anytime you want to. Mm. But we're not going to be together anymore because we're always fighting mm. and it's not good. Mm. So I don't want to fight with Papa all the time. Mm. Um, and I also 
made her understand what kind of fights because I'm not saying that when you're fighting, then you must get out. Yeah, That's not what I'm trying to teach yeah. her. But I'm also trying to say that we are not good for each other mm. because mama doesn't respect or papa did this, yeah. or, you know. Um, and just make her understand on her level, mm. but that it's not... It's not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay to walk out if you think that something doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did he ever lay a hand on you? He did. Um, I remember I was pregnant and he punched me. And that's because I spat on his face. Sure. Yeah. It's like I became a snake. And then he stood up and I ran. It was the first time. Sure. I ran, I'm like, I'm going to die. And he's like, today, I'm going to show you. Wow. I'm like, yo, when I be part of this path, yo, and then I'm going to get pregnant, help me, God. And I was like, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't do that again. I'm so sorry, please don't kill me. So, and then he left me. He left wow. me, he didn't, yeah, he, when I stood up, he punched me on my head. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, yo, wamo. And Gabi, what did you just do? Yo. And I begged him, I was like, please don't do anything. Because he wanted, he was pulling me to the bedroom. Sure. And I just, my mind started running wild. I'm like, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'm in heaven. <laughs> so, I'm like, please, God. I remember holding onto his leg. Because he was pulling me and I held onto his leg and I'm like, please don't. Please don't do it. He's like, I'm going to show you. I'm like, I'm begging you, please. But another part of me was like, let's go show each other. And I, and then I was like, no, dude, show who, what, where. You're going to die. You better humble yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm so sorry. And I remember my daughter coming out of the room Ooh. because I was screaming. Ooh. She came out of the room and she's like, Papa, what's going on? Ooh. From that day, I'm like, that's not the life I want to live. Yeah. Because from here, it's going to escalate. It's definitely going to escalate. Sure. And the reason why we had that fight was because I, he wasn't talking to me. Namfa, that cold shoulder, I think mm. I found out that he was cheating or whatever. And then mm. um, he just kept quiet. Then I left. I went to my grandmother, mm. came back, came back, I think nearly 31 or December, came back to have a conversation with him. And he's like, I was happy when you were not here. And I'm like, you've been doing this for so many years. You would F things up, do something bad to me, keep quiet. And then I must be the one that comes back and apologizes for something I did not do. And I'm tired of this. I'm coming back to fix my marriage. And this is what you're telling me? Sure. That's when it happened. Sure. And then when my daughter came, uh, I was like, I remember seeing this when I was young. Mm. And I always just asked myself, well, why is my mom still here? Mm. So I was like, no, I don't want my daughter to get to that stage of asking, mom, why are we still here? Why don't you just leave this man? And that's probably going to happen when she's in her 20s. Yeah. Because now she's young. She won't understand it. And she's going to think it's normal for a man to hit oh. a woman or a woman hitting a man. So yeah. like, no, let's not. It's peace out. But that night we went to church. Then he started being the loving husband that I wanted him wow. to be. Then I was like, no, because I've got enough knowledge, you've mm -hmm. been doing this for all these years. Mm -hmm. So I know what you're doing. Yeah. Then once I relax, you're going to start again. Yes. So, no, dude, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. Who was your support system during this time? And who is your support system now? My grandmother. Oh. Ah, Gogo's a rock star. Gogo's a superstar. Uh, but there was a time when I remember telling her that I don't want to be here anymore. She's like, no, Kabugan's a la yonki into. And umsha, don't tana me And I was like, Gogo, it's either you're going to have me like this or you're going to take me out of this house in a coffin. Mm. You decide. And she's like, okay, I hear you. And that's how she made peace with it. Because I was like, someone's going to die. Yeah. And I'm going to kill this man or he's going to kill me. Yeah. And it. I am capable of killing someone. I'm human. Mm. Um, it could be through poison. It yeah. could be through anything. Anything. Um, and that's why we can never judge people mm. that kill. And sure. I'm not saying it's right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm a murderer. No, I'm not. Hey, can I 
<laughs> I'm not. But I also understand what anger can do to a person, especially when you've just moved away from God, man. So it's, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, no, it's not worth it. Let's all be alive. We're here moving on. Yeah. You know, like when you were speaking, you reminded me of something that my um, pastor's wife once said. Yeah. And she said that we attract who we are, hundred, not what we want. See, we do. How hectic is that? We really do. We attract who we are. So who we if are. You are broken. Yeah. And you are whatever you are. That's the kind of person you're going to attract. Yeah. So we must always look at ourselves first. And that's why they say, when you're pointing at someone, check yourself first. Yeah. What made you get into that relationship? What is in you or what's not in you that's missing and you want this person to fulfill? Sure. Yeah. So when I, like I said, when I started having a better relationship with Christ, then it was easy for me to say, mm, no, I don't want this one. Oh, no, I want yeah. this one. Oh, no, this one. I bought. Oh, no, this one doesn't. Yeah. Oh, I love that. What lessons have you learned about yourself, love and relationships now looking back in hindsight? What have I learned about myself? That I can be very crazy. Mm -hmm. I can be a very bad person. Mm -hmm. I can be evil. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that I'm a good person. Yeah. Um, I've learned that I can forgive. Mm -hmm. But it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, about love. Mm -hmm. That it's patient. Mm -hmm. And that I need to be patient, man. Um... I need to be kinder. I mean, I need to be kinder. I need to be, I can be more loving. I can, and this is not in a romantic way, but I can be more loving to strangers. I don't only need to love people that love me. Yeah. Um, I can be understanding, more understanding. And yeah. And that when you carry the fruits of the spirit, then it's easy to just go through life. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm learning. And, and that I must just be more patient with myself as mm -hmm. well. Um, God is still making me better every day. And that's why I can't live without him. Yeah. Because if I had to lose him, I don't know. Yeah. Baba and Simari. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. But when I have him, at least or no, Gabi, you can't do that. You can't behave like that. Gabi, that was mean. Go apologize. Yeah. Gabi, be kinder. Yeah. Yeah. Love. What is love? And he's still unpacking it to me. Because maybe or I mean it's okay, things no, that, that you can tell me. It's not toxic, but there's some women that are like, oh no, I can't keep taking care of this man. I can't. You know? Um, but let's let's go to counseling. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do whatever it takes to fix your marriage. I don't condone divorce at mm -hmm. all. I hate it. Mm -hmm. But try it. Try everything. Mm -hmm. Don't just leave because now Gabi said, oh, I left and I was happy and God, God was taking care of me. Ah, ah, show me wrong ten. Go find, go find help. Mm. Do whatever that it, you mm. need to do to fix your marriage, mm. you know. And when you feel that, okay, I can't do this anymore, then mm. but try by all means to fix your marriage. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. I'm definitely going to get married again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, I think it's a God thing. Mm. So, yeah. I just want to add, like, with like what you're saying, that... Because how, like you were saying, that your grandmother said, oh, no, this is what man uh, looks uh, like. Jay, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's one of the saying, yeah, Jorge, Musaidu Tara Tiba, Mobo Khaling. I was like, darling. I get a Tiba. I get a go Tara Tiba. Tiba, it's on Tava. You know what I mean? Um, I think when a marriage gets to a place where it's between life and death. Yeah. Me, 100%. Don't negotiate. Don't yeah. even think about it. Don't have this thing. Yeah, I'm going to the tea. No, Le leave. leave. Why? Why you want to the tea? Go lean along. Hey. Why the dalaga the tea? Go lean along. Hey. Why the slice? Why the slice? 
Lihat lihat sahaja mana, 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 mana. So when you make it sound mind run wild, lah. Lihat lihat sahaja mana, mana. Lihat lihat sahaja mana, mana, mana. You know what I mean? Leave, leave. Just don't do it, guys. You know. Uh, are you happy? I'm in my happy era. Okay. Um, and I think I can be happier. Yeah. I think I can be happier, and I think I used to think that things would bring happiness to me. But now I understand that having a relationship with Christ is bringing all yeah. the happiness that I need. Yeah. Because things perish, people leave, but God doesn't. Yeah. So when I have Him, all the happiness I need is there. So yeah. And so I am happy, and I like I said, I can be happier. And this, how can I be happier? Is me just. Seeking for this God more and more and more and more because you can never finish Him. When you think you know Him, yes. there's another side of exactly. it that He shows you another face, and you're yeah. like, oh, I didn't know you existed. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. What does purpose mean to you? Purpose means what? Purpose is God's will. Yeah. In short, that's what it is. Purpose is. God's will, me doing what He has called me to do, sure, which is sharing His word, glorifying His name, doing everything that I need to do. In, I mean, I've got a talent which is talking a lot. <laughs> we love it. Yeah, which is acting, singing. Yeah. So my purpose is to show God's glory through my talent. Yeah, because sure. I understand that he did not just put me on TV to be famous. Mm. I don't even care about fame, whether you know me or not. One scream, one scream, you follow me or not. It doesn't add any value mm. to my life. What will add value is me getting a well done from him. Sure. Yeah. My good and faithful servant. That's it. That's, that's, what, that's what I need now. I want him to say, well done. Thank you for sharing your story, my daughter. Mm. I know you thought it was an embarrassing thing, but there's someone's life that you yeah. actually just saved. Exactly. You spoke about me, yeah. and that's what we need to do now, sure. just to speak about him. How did you get that job? Through Christ. Yeah. How did you get out of that marriage that was abusive? It was through Christ. Yeah. How did you survive that rape? I, it was through Christ. Because there's nothing else. I can't take the glory at all. Like, yeah. at all. I couldn't have done it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you mentioned rape. Yes. Were you raped? I was molested. Man. We need 10 hours. I was molested when I was young. Um, yeah, I was molested quite a lot of times. Luckily, they didn't penetrate. But I was molested a couple of times. Um, and I was so angry at those guys. I actually wanted to look for them. And I was like, bah. Some of them, I still see them. But I'm like, you're broken. Mm. I understand. Um, mm. And it, it's helped me forgive them. Sure. Because for the longest time, I was like, you're such a dog. I don't trust you. I don't. I don't. But now I'm like, shame. Mm. Yeah. I wish you could heal. Sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> In my book, what do you see? I talk about physical scars and you know internal scars, and and just like me, you have gone through both physical scars and you know internal scars. Yeah, have you healed from within? I'm in that process. I believe that healing has stages. There's a part where you go through. You're like, ah, oh, no, I'm healed. Then you're in denial, and you, yeah. And you think that everything is fine. And then it hits you again that, oh my gosh, I actually just got divorced. And you're like, oh. mm. And then you go through the, okay, it's not all bad. Mm. I'm okay. I'm getting there. Mm. Then you fall, but I'll fall it down there. Mm. Um, so I could say I'm on level, if there was 10 levels of healing, mm. I could say I'm halfway there. Yeah, I'm not fully healed, mm. but I'm in that process and I'm enjoying the stages. I love that. Yeah. I love that. All right, so now we are now um, at the last segment. Okay. Where I'm going to ask you your 
different perspectives on various things. Okay. Now, what is your perspective on power? Power, my perspective on power, I used to think power was dominating, but also power can be letting go. Mm, ooh. Yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what is your perspective on spirituality? Almost they each to their own. Spirituality. <laughs> I think what is my perspective on it is being intimate. Um, being intimate. You know when you are, and I, I, I want to use an analogy that I think people can relate to. You know when you, when you're with your husband and you guys are in bed and you strip yourself naked and you do what you need to do as husband and wife, you know, not as boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> as husband and wife. <laughs> um, that's what it is. You're like, you are, you're naked. You're naked. Like there's nothing that you are hiding. You see my scars. You know how I smell. You are inside of me. Mm. You can literally, you can feel my heartbeat. Yeah. That's what spirituality is. Ew. It's just stripping yourself naked. Yeah. And just getting to that, that G spot. Yeah. 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 Are you like, yeah. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> And you get there. That's, so, that's spiritual. And that's why we can't just sleep with people. Mm. That's why sex is for marriage. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's spiritual. Mm. It's very spiritual. So, yeah. Oh, what is your perspective of family? Love. That's what family is. Love and forgiveness. So, yeah. What is your perspective on mental health? Mental health. I could put two words, strength and forgiveness as well. Mm. Yeah. Just be strong and forgive yourself and them. Yeah. Mm. What is your perspective on self-love? Self-love. Knowing who you are. Sure. Yeah, then you can love yourself better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Gabby, when I started seeing my greatness and my beauty, I had to stop looking at myself, but I had to start seeing me. Uh, what do you see when you look at yourself into that mirror over there that's right next to you? Um, what do I see? Huh. Good question. I think I'm seeing someone who was broken and is now being formed again. And I needed to break so that I can be the person that I need to become. Yeah. That's who I see. I see a broken person that's slowly building up into little pieces and they just putting the pieces, new pieces. They're not putting back the pieces, but rebuilding. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for bearing yourself naked, you know, and for being spiritual here with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. This was a, I think this is one of the best interviews I've done in my 16 years of oh. being in the industry. <laughs> it is. It's one of the best. Um, it's amazing. And it's funny because I asked to interview her, but it's not her fault. She agreed. It's me that took forever. <laughs> I said, like, I'm going to beat her to it. Yay. <laughs> Come to my show. But and let me tell you, it was worth coming. It was really worth it. Sure. I didn't even hesitate. Uh, I was just like, yeah, why not? Um, and it happened at the right time, just after my fasting. Uh, and I guess, 
God just saying, this is where, this is the route we're taking. Yeah. Um, I don't just want to do things now. I don't just want to just go to an interview because it's an interview. Mm. There must be a purpose behind it. Yeah. There must be a good reason behind it. Mm. Um, I get no cut like the camera, no. Yeah, I'm bored anymore. Because people use it and they use it to shame people. Yeah. Um, cameras are not the best thing anymore. But we can always bring that back as children of yeah. to say that we're going to use the very same thing that is bringing people down to uplift people. Amen. So thank you so much. Um, may God just grow this and take it to other countries and make people see it. Thank you. Yeah, you are so amazing. It's such an, a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Sure. Kanye, the you are something else. And you didn't say much. I mean, we don't even know each other. We just <laughs> live today. We, but I just loved you. I was like, there's so much to learn from you. Mm-hmm. So much. Like, yeah. Because someone else would ask themselves, well, how do I love myself when mm-hmm. I've been through whatever that I've yeah. been through? How do I look at myself and say I'm beautiful again? Yeah. How? Yeah. So that's what I admire. I'm like, sure. This girl was up there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> how crazy is it that you can't even explain it? Yeah, because everything just goes back to God. Exactly. But I really can't explain exactly. it. <laughs> but I am who I am yeah. because of this God who said amazing things to me. You know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. You are the apple of my Oh, right. Before you were even born in your mother's womb. Like every single thing that we go through, like God knew it. You know what I mean? And it's so amazing how I'm seeing your beauty. So, like I'm seeing how beautiful you are. Yeah. And, you know, when, I don't know, that man in the Bible, I think, I was blind, but now I see. Yes. I I get it. So. I get the revelation in there. Yeah. Because it's not that he, his eyes were closed. Yeah. He probably could see. Yeah. But... He could not see. Sure. You know? Sure. So God is slowly taking off this veil. Like yeah. the thing that has been covering my eyes. And I'm like, God, yeah. this is so beautiful. Everything that you're doing in my life, it's so perfect. Sure. Beautiful. Sure. Um, yeah. So thank you for this. Thank you. It was worth it. Thank you. And like I said, you know what I was so good. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Hey, I don't want to believe. Please. 2024. It's all about Jesus. I know. Anyway, honestly, like, it's either way, we are black or white. We can't be gray. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That time. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. Sure. And this episode was made possible by Same View Pictures with their state-of-the-art video and sound equipment and Vela Creatives with their top-of-the-line post-production powered by IS Wines. Gabby, this camera or this camera or this camera Please tell the people what you have going on and what people should look out for and where they can follow you. I have an excellent presenters workshop happening on the 2nd of March, 2024. So I'm going to put up the poster. You guys must come learn how to get into the industry, what to do in the industry, what not to do in the industry to be famous because hey, nine, uh, we're going to be talking about camera work, uh, we're going to be talking about how to get jobs in the industry, what it is that you can do if you're not in front of the camera. Um, so look out for that. And I've also got my story, Your Healing Event, that's coming up very soon. I just need a date for that one. Um, and acting-wise, we're going to see. Um, I'm going into producing, so which is something I think. <laughs> Getting into producing. Um, and yes, so now it's time to just, do my own thing. It, it's time God's children employ people. Yes. Yes. So yeah, look out for that. And you can find me on all my social media platforms. I am Gabby C. Letty. And I also do have a YouTube channel. It's called Gabby and Mo with my partner. And I also have my own, which is Gabby C. Letty. Shabalala. A little bit of funny. <laughs> we love it. We love it. I think the last announcement is that, family, can we please go and vote this year? Oh, yeah. Can we please go and vote? Like, South Africa, this is a crucial time for South Africa. Yeah. I think this year, these this year's elections are just as important as 1994. That's true. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, guys, how to voting, how to vote, um, net vote. It's very important. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that I know that are like, I mean, I'm not vote. I mean, I'm not going vote. No, I'm fine. Your vote count. Yeah. So please go out there. Yeah. Go somewhere in my line. It showed me it's just for that day and go and vote. Yeah. And it's not only happening in South Africa, but it's happening in so many other African mm-hmm. countries. I think God is just doing something. Yeah. He's bringing a change. Yeah. And you want to be part of that. Yes. Go and vote. Yes. <laughs> you move clean. I get You move clean. Guys, please let's go and vote. Um, if black people could change this country, black and white people and other races, if those people could change the country in 1994, then we can definitely do the same now. Yes. Um, yeah. Gabby? Mm-hmm. A candle tried to burn me. It also tried to ruin me. It also tried to kill me. No. Yeah. There's a candle. But that very same candle, it lives within me now. And that candle is shining bright. So from one candle to another, uh-uh. please keep shining. You're going to like... Oh, that guy. Oh, wow. Wow. I'll keep shining. Yeah. And I'll go make others shine too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm listening. I'm show. And from me, Mrs. Itsumilang Sikubedi, keep your perspective alive. Whoa.